Are you tired of your graphics card sounding like a jet engine? Or are the temperatures so hot that you're tired of seeing it kill your performance? Or are you in a small form factor case and you want to lower your temperatures and get similar performance? Or do you just want better graphic performance and you want to get more frames? Well, this video, we're talking about how you can overclock your card and undervolt it using MSI Afterburner and free programs to test everything. Let's get into this video. A couple of disclaimers before we get into this. We are going to be messing with voltages and core clocks on your graphics card through MSI Afterburner. So just know, make sure you make small adjustments. I'm not responsible for anything that you do, whatever the case, but any of these things that you do can make sure that you get better performance as well as lower temperatures, but you can also crank things to an extreme. So make sure you do things with caution. If you're worried about if it's going to do something, don't do it. However, if you follow what I'm talking about here, you should see results very similar. Similar. To get started, we're going to need a couple of programs, one of them being MSI Afterburner. And this works not only with NVIDIA cards, but also with AMD cards, and I believe also with Intel cards. We also are going to need one more piece, which is the actual Heaven benchmark. This one is free. You can go download it. All the links for these will be down in the description. I'm also going to be using 3 Mark's Port Royal test to test ray tracing, uh, which pushes the card even further than Heaven. However, that one's not free. You can get it on Steam if you want to go check it out. That being said, let's get started with this tutorial. The first thing is that when we open up Afterburner, yours might not look like this, just as an FYI. So to do that under settings, wherever it is on your screen, you can actually change the interface. I'm using the MSI Gaming Z. I'm pretty sure it's just on the default skin, whatever the case, but just so FYI, just if you want to match what I'm doing, this is the skin that I use. So what we see here is everything is stock. And if whatever happens, you want to be able to set things back to stock, you can just click this little reset icon and it does reset everything back to stock. We're going to go ahead and change a couple of settings if you want to continue using this under the actual general page start with windows start minimized and then check everything you want down here you do want to unlock voltage control and voltage monitoring if it's not unlocked for you make sure that those are done don't click force constant voltage the next step is to adjust all of these sliders core voltage power limit temp limit etc to get the achieved piece that we want a lot of people will just take this power limit slider crank it core clock give it some memory clock, give it some hit apply, and they're like, yay, free performance. But then you also get higher temperatures as well as higher usage wattage wise when it comes to your card. Today, we're trying to do the opposite. We're trying to actually make it to where you use less wattage, lower temperatures, and either meet the same performance or beat the performance you had before. So again, I, I just move some stuff. I can just click this reset and it puts me back to normal. All right, I'm currently installing the Heaven Benchmark now. It's fully installed. And now we're going to go ahead and open it, Heaven Benchmark. Mark 4. We're going to click agree and we get a little bitty baby window. We can leave everything on whatever we want. Quality, high, tessellation, stereo, all of this stuff. We're just going to go ahead and click run so we can get some power onto the card. So what you're looking at is the heaven benchmark right here. All I've done is actually freeze the frame. If I hit space, you can see that it plays through. If I hit space, it'll freeze the frame and just continue to render that. You can actually see the smoke still coming out of this chimney right here. And you can see it's rendering a whole bunch of just different stuff here. So I'm going to leave it right here and talk about what you're seeing. At the very top right of the screen, you're actually seeing the Reva Statistics Tuner, which comes along with uh, MSI. You just have to set it up. Let me know in the comments if you want me to show you how to set that up so you can turn it on in any game and be able to monitor GPU temps, CPU temps, frames, all that stuff. On this frozen frame, we're currently getting 166 FPS at 4K on my RTX 4080. And you can see right here, we're getting a 76 degrees Celsius on my GPU. We're getting a 300. 20 watts of usage and we're at 2740 2765 kind of bumping around that uh, for the core speed and what you're seeing is this is a pretty solid 166 167 frame rate now if i enable the profile that i've created and i've messed with and i turn that on what we're going to see is that the frame rate is only going to go down maybe like two, three frames. We're even maybe even going to come back up to where we were, 165, 164. But what you've seen is I've actually dropped from 76 degrees Celsius down to 68 degrees Celsius. We've dropped over 70 watts or just about 70 watts of usage. And we've actually got a faster core speed. And you can see I'm still hitting 166 on the frame right here. So maybe at most we've lost or gained the, the exact same point.
point by just enabling this. And we've gained all of that. More temperature headroom, which means quieter fans, lower wattage usage, so lower power bill, all of that stuff. How did I do this? So what we're gonna do is actually go ahead and tune this. First thing we're gonna do is take this power limit and temp limit, and we are going to max them out. Is that going to give us anything? Not really, but it will actually overclock the card and allow the card to go even further on the uh, like natural profile. So you're gonna see a higher usage, like 330 or so. Uh, and you're gonna see up to about 77 degrees on the GPU. But what we need to do is actually undervolt the card. So what you'll do is when you go in here and actually click unlock voltage control and monitoring, you need to actually restart MSI for it to show the voltage piece here. So you can see I'm using like 1,075 millivolts of stuff to be able to achieve 2790 megahertz. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually right beside core clock, you're gonna see this little graph piece. When you click this, you're going to get this chart. Now, the goal of this chart is this is actually your boost algorithm. This is what it's gonna tell, like based upon how many millivolts, this is kind of the expected uh, kind of speed that you're looking for. And you can actually adjust and pull this up and down by just moving this core clock slider and just adjusting how large or how small uh, this actually is. So if you lower it down, you're gonna be you know losing you know quality. If you boost it up, you're gonna get more. However, higher temps, et cetera. See, I'm pushing 78 degrees now. So what we're gonna do is a reset. We're gonna put this back up for power limit and temp limit. And we're gonna mess around with this graph. Now, what we're doing is we're looking up here and we're gonna see if heaven crashes. If heaven crashes, that means that we have done a little bit too much. So here's what we're gonna do. We see that 2775 megahertz is where we're aiming. Depending on your graphics card and what you're looking at, that's what you're going to be looking for. This is this clock right here. We're gonna aim for this megahertz piece right here and we're going to find it on the chart so somewhere about right here is that bubble 2765 2775 and we can see that it's wanting to use 1070 millivolts so what i'm going to do is looking at this dot right here i'm actually going to go down in voltage and raise one of these previous dots up to this so let's go down to about a thousand so this is just a little bit of a test. We're gonna go up to the same point, 2770. Okay, we're gonna go right there. This is 2770-73 right there. And what I'm gonna do on my keyboard is I'm gonna hold the control button and hit L. And what that does is it applies this yellow line. It's going to lock the voltage on this setting. So now when I click X and I click apply, it's now locked me at a thousand millivolts and I'm at 2760. I could probably go in here and move this dot up just a little bit. Boom, maybe 2784. We'll hit X and we're gonna click apply and we get, should get another boost bin 2790 at 1000 millivolts. Now what you can see is I'm still at 166, 167 FPS, but I've dropped almost 35 watts just doing that. And we've dropped six degrees on Celsius. Almost no performance loss or no performance loss. And we went ahead and done this. Now the other part of this is uh, we could just take this and push it up. So let's maybe go up to like 2851. Let's lock that one in. Make sure that yellow line is there. Hit apply. And you can see that I've actually boosted. Now I'm gonna be getting hopefully some more FPS, 169, 168, and with no more usage on wattage and no more GPU resources. So this is where you're able to start messing around and see how things go. Now, this is where I also need to stay. I'm not telling you to just have fun and move these numbers. Yes, you can, you need to be careful. Small incremental adjustments make the best here. Uh, but what I have found works really well for my card is actually 950 millivolts. 930 is the lowest it goes, by the way. 950 millivolts around that same stock setting, but I like to aim around 2800. I lock that. And for my card, I'm able to get really low on my millivolts, dropping my actual just like my temperature using dropping my wattage and using about the same performance lower power lower temps etc but you can also do the other let's say you have a lot more headroom okay a lot more headroom like this is 67 degrees i could overclock i could totally go in here grab this maybe the thousand millivolt one let's go up to like 2900 let me lock that one control l We'll click apply, 1000 millivolts, 2900. I have overclocked my card now, quote unquote, but my usage barely went up. I'm at 170, I've maybe gained like 
three, four, five FPS, my wattage is going up and this feels pretty comfortable, right? This is what's called overclocking your card. So by adjusting this core clock, this is what's called undervolting because the card wants to pull 1,075 millivolts. We're telling it only use 1,000 and then do this. Now, depending on your card, these numbers should not apply to you unless you have a Zotac Gaming Trinity OC blah, blah, blah. That's what I've got. Yours is always going to vary. So here's how I would do it. Once again, run stock settings and see, like find a frozen frame inside heaven. Go up here and see what your normal actual megahertz is. Okay, and start there. Look at what how much it actually uses using on your millivolts. Okay, and then start going down. So mine was using 2715 for 1025 or so. So I'm gonna go find 20 1025. Let's just go to a thousand. I'm gonna go up to 2725. We lock that. Control L, and then click apply. And once that's done, now I'm getting the same performance with lower power as well as temperature. For those of you advanced users wanting to really push it to the edge, here you go. What you do is you wanna find what your lowest temperature or your lowest voltage for your card is. What do you do? You actually just like close all your programs, open MSI, let it be on stock settings and see how low your card goes. That's your lowest wattage. Go up a few millivolts from that, maybe like 10 or so. Mine's 950, right? I can probably push you know, you can go up on that 950 millivolt and you can just lock this, boom, click X. And then I can probably push that. But now what did you see? If I push too far, heaven in the background is artifacting and having crashed. And that's pretty typical when you push your card too far, you will have some kind of a crash. And in this case, heaven crash. This is pretty normal if you wanna push things too far. So just be aware that you can overdo things and that's what will happen. So just be careful, go a little bit at a time. For those of you curious what my setting is, I actually have an 800 memory clock overclock, which just gives it more of the memory bus, putting me up to 12,000 megahertz for the memory bus and it puts me right at 2800 locked now I do want to make a statement i don't run this at all times i only run this when i'm gaming so what i'll do is under the settings menu i'll go over to profiles and you can actually set profiles and hotkeys you can actually set them up to change to different profiles based upon what game you do totally but mine is shift f1 is actually my reset and all I've, i'll show you how to save those in a second shift f1 is just my like stock profile whatever the case shift Shift F5 is my like best one. And then Shift F4 is an overclock when the, rather than being undervolted, it's an overclock. So Shift F5 is my like, I want it to run the same, but I want it to be cooler. And this is what I normally run when I play games and stream and things like that. So go ahead and set up a profile for one that's just reset stock. Make sure you hit your reset here. Click the gear to unlock or the lock to unlock. Click the save icon and then choose a profile and then just set that to a key bind that makes sense. And then same thing whenever you make a profile that you like and you want to save, do it for one of the other ones and save it there. If you want it to do at startup one of these profiles, you want to uncheck this box and check it on the profile that is currently active. And every time it restarts your computer, it'll start MSI and enable that profile. I always have it enable the stock profile and I turn on the lower undervolted one when I game. All right, so we can see some actual scores data. I'm going to go ahead and run these. This is the stock profile. There's no adjustments. I've even hit the reset button. I'm going to go ahead and run Port Royal, which does ray tracing and everything. We're not going to do the demo. We're going to see what score we get at the end. All right. So we just started the Port Royal test. This is the like stock profile. You can see we're sitting at about 71, 72 degrees, um, all full usage, 320 watts of usage on this right now. So yeah, let's see what the score we get when this run is done. So there we go. We got a score of 17,604 and it seems like our GPU and everything was pretty solid most of the way, 2730-ish uh, on the actual core. And we got it at 77 degrees right at the very end of the run. So really solid run. And you can see right here, pretty steady line when it goes all the way through. It's GPU temperature going all the way up, 77 right there at the very end. Now let's enable our other profile. We're gonna enable five, which is my other profile. And what we're gonna do is run it again. It said graphics test was an 81.50 FPS score. We're gonna run the same test, but this time we're gonna see it with the undervolted piece. 
All right, so we just started this run and you can already see the temperature is much different. We're at 63 degrees where I think we were at 71, 72 before, but the card's already probably a little warm. So the temperatures might be a little higher just because of that. But usage, we were using 320 watts at this time. So you're seeing a solid like 50 watts difference uh, from where we were before. And that's just because we're using ray tracing as well, which is the whole card. So I'm pretty confident we're gonna get a very similar score, but with lower temperature lower watt usage uh, we'll see what happens <laughs> oh yo that's actually higher than the last one uh, that's crazy so it was a 17 I think it was a 601 was the previous score and this time we got a 17 941 so more performance less wattage less temperature and a better FPS score I think it was 81 8.5 it's 83.06 here uh, and for the temperature we hit 70 degrees so a whole six Celsius dropped a solid solid line here it feels really nice to be able to see all of this i'm pretty like i'm pretty impressed that this actually worked really well a couple of notes that are really important so listen up to these number one depending on the game that you play you might have different results for example this worked in both port royal and in heaven however depending on what game you play it could impact the card in a different way and request more voltage at a different time so depending on what you play i would do some casual gaming and test it to see how well it does on a longevity piece before you do something like a ranked game and then make sure that while doing that if you need to make adjustments, just make small incremental adjustments. The last thing is I feel like it's really important that the stock profile be the one that the card is booted with. Once again, make sure you hit reset, unlock the lock, and then save your stock preset to number one, just like that. Uncheck the Windows box, or if it's already checked, whatever the case, turn it on and then lock this again so that when your computer starts up and MSI Afterburner starts, it starts with the stock profile and you can enable the overclocked profile in in case you have some kind of like a crash or something and the system restarts, you don't want it to start with the overclocked profile. Let me know down in the comments if you want that Reva statistics tutorial on how to show all of the stats on the screen. And also check out one of these two videos. I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy them, especially this one, that multiple monitors might actually be hurting your setup. Thanks guys. Hope you'll have a great day.